Hello everybody and welcome to a different show here on the channel, uh, something I'm going to be calling Deep Thoughts. Uh, I don't know why specifically I'll be calling it that, I just thought it was funny. Uh, I, I wanted to make something that could uh, have a little bit of a longer runtime as opposed to in a minute, and a minute being after all like a minute and maybe a couple seconds long. It doesn't really please YouTube's algorithm all that well, so I wanted something uh, in regards to anime, uh, seasonal anime rather, that I could kind of have like go 10 minutes but without being too uh, too editing intensive. So there won't be a whole ton of editing in this. Uh, deep thoughts or rather deep thoughts, uh, as I'm going to be calling it, is basically just uh, a way for me to elaborate on uh, specific shows that I'm covering on in a minute. Uh, in a hopeless bid to please YouTube's strange algorithm. Uh, that said, I want to talk a little bit more in depth on Fruits Basket Episode 1. I am really surprised. This show was quite, uh, quite charming. It, it definitely, like, I was, I, I knew I was going to enjoy it. I just wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. It wasn't like a gold star, oh my god, holy cow kind of, uh, opening. It, it was just this very... Like, it, I, I guess, it, ironically enough, it was a very inviting premiere. Like, much like Toru being invited into the Soma household. It, it was a very inviting premiere. Like, it felt as though the folks over at TMS really wanted you to feel as though you were being welcomed into Fruits Basket. And for a lot of people, it was, it was a welcome back to Fruits Basket. Now, I, I haven't seen... Uh, the previous series, so to me, these were totally new. Uh, the the cat boy, I had to look up his name because I didn't know what his name was, and I'm sure for some people they're gonna be like, "What? That's Kyo! He's amazing! Oh my gosh!" But yeah, I I have to. Um, this is my first experience with these characters, and uh, before I really get into the characters, though, I want I want to emphasize just how beautiful this show is. It is, oh my gosh. The opening scene with Toru leaving her tent and, and greeting the day, and you see this, like, like the sun beaming down over the city, and it slowly kind of pans over to see, to show Toru, like, overlooking this, like, on the big hill, like, overlooking the city. It was such a pretty shot, and the whole show has this, it's very shoujo. It's so pretty, and it's so well done, like, like the, and, and pretty just, and it doesn't just extend to the girls because, yes, the boys are indeed pretty. My Fidanchi side, which is all of my sides, was very happy to see pretty boys and pretty gals. And it was just the character designs, the the, the background art, the every, everything about it, it, it. It's a beautifully stunning show. The only thing that I thought, what, like, it, it didn't fit and wasn't as pretty was, ironically enough, the transformations, I, I, they just sort of poof into existence, and I'm sure that's how it was in the original, and I'm sure that's how it was in the manga, but the way that it's animated in the, uh, the, the, the new show, it, it, it's very abrupt, it just suddenly, I, I realized how much, I, I never noticed until now how much I sound like Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> But it, with my stuttering, but I swear, like it was an interesting. Like I was, I was really enjoying the scene with Kyo, fight. Uh, not, I, I guess, fighting uh, Yuki, and then all of a sudden, uh, when Toru hugs Kyo, he sort of explodes into what I can only describe as the this this like fairy dust, basically. He just explodes into. I think it was like orange or something. It, it was a specific colored cloud, and it was very jarring. It, it, it didn't mesh very well with the rest of the show. I, I, I guess you could say that that was the point, that it was meant to to be otherworldly looking and not really meant to fit in with the rest of it. If it, if it was just a cloud, it was meant to, it, they probably would have just animated it like a cloud. But to me, it was a little too jarring, like took me out of it. I was so into the, into the episode and then that kind of brought me out. Um, so, so yeah, I guess that would be like my one negative about the episode i do have two negatives because if it if it was just one negative then it would have gotten a gold star i have two negatives but we'll get into the the, the other negative later because i also want to get back to talking about the characters because oh oh my good gracious toru toru is the best i love her so much <laughs> she is to be protected she's a precious little soldier and she must be protected from the world i was so just like rooting for her she's such a charming 
Just, just, she's the most charming, adorable MC. Like I said in the end of minute, just the most charming and adorable MC I've seen in such a long time. Like the whole cast is great for sure, believe me. But Toru, she's got a special place in my heart. I wouldn't necessarily call her a waifu. I've seen some people like saying like she's my waifu, and and I could definitely see people wife and uh, wifey, wifeying her up rather. Um, but uh, to me, I, I I don't quite know yet. I don't know. I don't know her like that yet. Um, but maybe, maybe. I mean, everybody loves a girl who can cook, and I mean, Toru is an excellent chef, apparently. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed already. She's a great chef. She's a hard worker. She's been through a lot, but she keeps a smile on her face, and and she's trying to live up to the 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 memory of her mom. And she's just this unbelievably charming character. Uh, so I can see why people would wifey her up. Uh, she's just not quite a waifu status. She's not quite at waifu status for me yet. But oh my god, she is so lovable and charming. I want to protect that smile. As uh, is she just, she's great. Uh, but speaking of of, of great, I, I do want to, or I guess great, but also sad is the. I wanted to to, to talk about quickly the "see you when you come back" line that broke me. That is like legitimately uh, one of my biggest fears. I think is. Um, like not saying see uh, see when you get back. Like not saying that to your friend uh, or your mother in this case, or any other family member or friend. That's a scary. That that's a, a scary thing that people don't think about. Um, I think about it because I'm an anxious, horrible, nervous wreck constantly. My whole life is nothing but anxiety. But um, the idea of not saying like, oh, I love you, or I'll see you later, or it was good to see you, or see you when you get back, as, as it is in, in, in the episode, you don't realize that, you, like, sometimes, like, I'll just leave the house without saying bye, and Toru, you know, she just slept in, she was studying late, uh, she knew her mom would be back after, after school, so she just, you know, she, she slept through the day, and, but that was it, and she didn't get that chance, and that's gonna haunt her, and that is such a real thing like that's such a genuine human fear and regret and i'm so impressed that the show because the, the the whole episode is very jokey and very fun and then that like but it doesn't come out of nowhere it feels earned because we do know that that the mom passed away and we know that there's some underlying like sort of sadness with toru even though she's a very upbeat uh character it was just really, really brilliantly handled, and if it wasn't for those two gripes that I have, that moment alone would have earned it a gold star rating. It, it was, it was really well done. So yeah, if you can't tell, I think the writing in the show is particularly good. But uh, I do want to talk quickly on that note of the characters, the character writing, which I thought was pretty solid, given that the side characters got uh, or in, were endeared to me just as much as Toru. Like Sh Shigure is my boy. I love that man already. It's just him snickering like she lives in a tent. Ha ha ha. I was like, what a shit. But I, it, I, w I never felt like what a jerk. Like I could tell he was like, that's so funny. You could have just asked to, to stay with us. Like just stay with us. That's so ridiculous. Like you could tell he wasn't being like malicious. He just has like a, a cheeky sense of humor. At least that's that's the impression that I get. Um, good, good song, by the way. But that's the impression that I get of Shigure. He's uh, I can I can sense husbando uh, material within him, and I feel like I've gotten husbandos uh, pretty much like every season the last little while. Like recently, we got Rio uh, from Mob Psycho, who was a bad guy, yes, but I mean he was clearly husbando material, just smooth as hell. And Shigure is just. I, I don't know. He's he's a, a little shit, but at the same time, uh, he's very. You could tell he's just a cheeky, fun, loving kind of dude. But you could tell there's like a serious side to him, and you know, like he could take care of you. I'm already. Uh, oh my god, I'm already going husbando mode. I'm sorry. I could just tell that that's what this. Maybe that's that's what Fruits Basket is meant for. I, I, I'm I'm going to take it that that's the way it is because they they animate these boys and they give these boys these like close up shots that you're like okay <laughs> I'm meant to think these are some top tier husbandos so I I'm assuming that that's meant to be the point I could be wrong I feel like I'm right so I noticed that we're kind of getting towards the 10 minute mark so I do want to wrap things up quickly I, I don't want to ramble too much at you guys but I, I wanted to shout out someone from the comments I can't remember who it was uh, but they wanted to point out to me that Kyo is actually voiced by none other than Yuma Uchida and if you don't know who that is that's Ash Lynx's voice actor from 
what could very well be one of my new favorites, Banana Fish. I B Banana Fish still haunts me. It still <laughs> haunts my dreams. It's such a beautiful show. And uh, Yuma Uchida did such a phenomenal job as Ash. So knowing that he's voicing Kyo, who I'm assuming is going to play a pretty major role in the show, that makes me very excited. And that also means that Kyo is probably going to be a best boy. I also quickly wanted to mention one sort of negative, uh, the other negative that I had about the show before kind of wrapping it up uh, with some positive thoughts again. But I, d I did want to say that I d I, the, the soundtrack didn't really stand out to me. Maybe that was just me, but it, it, at no point during the show did I think like, wow, this is a really beautiful track. I, I don't know who was in charge of the soundtrack for episode one, or I mean the whole series rather, but uh, I, no track in episode one really leapt out to me uh, as I feel like maybe they wanted it to, but I will say the ED, uh, Lucky Ending, oh my goodness, just became All Might there, just oh my goodness, it was, it's such a, I, I think the word of the day is pretty, because it is such a pretty ending, it's such a pretty song. That's probably going to take ending of the season for me. Might take ending of the year. It's a pretty song with like some adorable characters just kind of lounging around. Uh, and it really got me. For some reason, I was like, wow, this ending is really good. Uh, so while the soundtrack itself didn't really leap out to me during the episode, the ED definitely did. So hey, everybody, thank you for watching my deep thoughts on Fruits Basket episode one. Uh, I will be doing this for a few other shows this season. Like I said, just to please YouTube's algorithm and because sometimes I do have a lot more that I want to say that I just can't fit into in a minute. So I really hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Before I go though, I do want to shout out the lovely folks over on Patreon, in particular Veridin, Gabriel, Urza, Opinionated Slime, Evil, and Tristan. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, stay rad and don't scary.